Thanks a lot for staying with us. We're counting down to the loss or to the conduct of the presidential primaries of different political parties as all eyes are on the APC and the PDP to see who will emerge their presidential candidates. In the meantime, the APC and PDP have rounded up their governorship primaries. There have been some upsets and surprises. While in places like Lagos, Governor Babajide Songwulu scored a resounding victory and picked up the APC's ticket for a second term. Based on uh, what delegates called his commendable performance in his first term, in some other states, some losers are already preparing for legal battles. Joining me now to talk more on these developments is public affairs analyst Bolaoba. It's good to have you, Thank you very much on for TBC the Breakfast. To be on your set. Indeed. So, well, looking at how it's all panned out, let me ask you generally. Um, former President Goodluck Jonathan has had a thing or two to say about the conduct of primaries, especially in the two major parties, calling it uh, a complete mess. Is that how you see it? It's a great forge. Uh, Historically, at some point, this is going to be referred to as the Great Forge of 2022. And the reason, actually, is that um, INEC is constrained to improvise its regulatory role and, indeed, improvise its legal interpretation of the provisions of the Estant Electoral Act 2022 as amended. Let's be very honest with ourselves. Majority of these parties, the two main parties, stricto facto, if you look at the provisions of the Electoral Act, are not, in, are not supposed to be in business this electioneering year. Do, does any of the two main parties have a credible members list? Can APC present today Ecosi, Koshofe, local government, Ecosi Ward, a credible members? I'm just using the example of the location of your studio. Mm. And can PDP? also present a credible members and the so these are foundational issues these are foundational issues leave that aside the conduct of the primaries thus far have been grossly inconsistent let me give you a typical example of what mm -hmm. was reported yesterday i was not in any of it but what was reported in lagos apc was such that two other candidates were were literally muzzled out for the incumbent governor. We've even seen one of them already, you know, talking about it. Mr. Oluwo especially. I've not even, I've uh, not even heard about that. Uh, but from the field, as a journalist or as somebody who is a father in the trade, I get reports from the field. And some of the things that one was speaking from the field yesterday was such that a muslin game was going on. Now, the... Electoral Act does not, uh, you know the irony of the circumstance of the APC, people watching this morning, whenever you listen to any analyst or any pundit or whatever speaking to consensus on the issue of how candidates emerge in APC, that person is speaking balderdash, bunkum. There is no provision for consensus in the candidate selection or candidate nomination pros process of the APC. It, there is in their general convention. That is choosing. And thank God yesterday I was validated by the chairman of the party. I listened to the um, chairman of the primary election committee of the APC in, in Lagos. Of course, at the time when, you know, journalists, including TVC News, were all primed up to you know, cover the primary, just seconds or so before the exercise started, he said there were three um, governorship aspirants and that there was going to be a level playing field. And then all of a sudden, the, the reports also circulated. Uh, but where I'm even going to is that uh, all these exercises... There's a difference between what is spoken and what 
what is actually done. Yes, your point is taken, uh, Mr. Oba, but, but then when you look at all these activities now that uh, you are finding fault in, there were, you know, INEC staff, you know, there to, to watch over. I know you've said that INEC is considerably constrained, but what is stopping INEC, you know, from acting as the watchdog that it is? Number one, the rich, uh, the rich jurisprudential antecedents puts INEC in a position where INEC can observe. Take note, but INEC cannot control. Indeed, virtually all these issues will not ultimately be decided against the parties by INEC. It has to be through courts of competent jurisdiction. And I'm seeing the only good thing again that the National Judicial Council has done now is that most of these litigations will not take place at the, at the high courts in the states or the state's high courts because we know that like the states in like the states independent electoral commissions we know that the state high courts are also Forgy in so some the, respects. So the tribunals are rightly constituted. No, even before the tribunals are constituted, litigations on electoral matters. Pre electoral matters. Uh, right? uh, pre uh, uh, elections, electoral matters would go through the machinery of the federal uh, court now as, as uh, stipulated by the new. Uh, amended new, act uh, not not the act but the procedural uh this is dictated by the by the judicial the national judicial council so I, i'm happy with that to prevent the issue of interference uh, to, that, to that, prevent, may, that may arise be, because many nigerians watching this program don't know that the politicians that many of you don't quite like and would love to vote out are those who ultimately end up so by imposing who will become judges on those who will just put the imprimatur of the National Judicial Council, the judges are the judges across the states are anointed candidates of the political chieftains in those domains. So, and that is why even the, the superior benchers in their in their best of judgment think, you know what? Don't let electoral matters from the states go to state high courts all those injunctions you see coming out from different state high courts all those expert or otherwise ah, they've cheapened the judicial process and the course of justice but we're not here to discuss that as it is now we are going to see a plethora of litigations in the backdrop of these primaries. So, at the altar, Both will all these... Parties. Your point is noted, but then you ask yourself, where is the place of the concept of internal democracy as many of these parties oh, all, Don't go too far, Don't go too far from that. Very about. important. Fantastic. You've nailed it, ma'am. You know why you've nailed it? The fundamental and organic problem with democracy in Nigeria as at today is the dystopic nature of internal democracies in the parties. Not only the two main parties, all the parties. The parties are now seen as private investments by those who first came together or who have the deep pockets to go and register it. And you know what they, what they don't want? They don't want a situation where some of you will come Think you are people of ideas or intellectuals or you are grassroots people or you are connected to the people. They just want to be dictating. So you end up having a situation or a scenario as we speak where even the delegates, we, we condemn the plutocracy at the top when one of the major parties says, candidates for the office of the president should buy forms for 40 million. Another says 10 million. But you want me to shock you. When you want to pick the delegates form, when you want to pick the form 
to put yourself forward to be voted for in your ward as a delegate. It goes up to 75,000 naira to collect the form. How many of our people in most of this in most of these poverty reading wards across the federation can afford to pick a phone for 75,000 naira. So somebody who is a money bag, who has interest in that particular ward, will pay for your phone for you. Now, when you eventually emerge, you also, you've seen the, you've seen the abuse of money anyway, why not profit from it? It's the natural instinct of human beings anywhere in the world. It's happening anyway. I can. You know, I can't turn this super tanker. Let me ride the wave with it. So it becomes it becomes a come and buy voting voting system. We, we people are blaming the delegates. But what we have now is a pretense to democracy is at best plutocracy. We, we've seen the, the law also intervening and while we await the Apex Court's final decision uh, regarding the legalities or otherwise of Section 8412, um, how do you think this has impacted negatively or otherwise on the conduct of our primary elections uh, so far? The absence of superdelegates and, and all that. I'm loving that, to be honest with you. I'm loving the fact that the president has not signed 84-8. You know why I'm okay. loving it? Because ordinarily, the, the plutocrats or the people who tend to, because of their, because of accident of circumstance in the, in the past, have, you know, been in one office, usually have common interest. They seldom... Now, let a, let an organic democratic process produce the delegates that we vote. The only thing I don't like about the process through which delegates emerge now is the money that an average person who wants to be a delegate has to use to pay for forms. In some parties, in one of the two major parties, the cheapest is 25,000 naira. I can afford to tell you that in Ojuwoye, Ojuwoye, Ward 1, where I was born and raised in Mushi, many of those who attend party meetings cannot afford to dole out that money to collect, to collect candidates' form. Just collect the form new. That has not satisfied you to be a... The, the, there will still be a pretense to a vote, to elect the delegate. Something is fundamentally wrong with what we are practicing now that we are delusionally or pretensively telling ourselves is democracy. This is not democracy. You know what I would have loved if the parties were to have respectable or credible members list would have been direct primaries because if you are a bona fide card carrying member of the party, you would be eligible to walk to a ballot and say, ah, this is the person I want to be the candidate for my ward, for my local government, for my state, or for the president. For the presidential election of my party. Can Nigeria's democracy? for the parties and otherwise, can, can we really afford to do that? How realistic is the, the direct primary mode? If these people meet anyway, at least, <laughs> if they're not deluding us that these parties are portfolio parties, and many of them are portfolio parties, including the two major parties in many areas of this country, they are portfolio parties. When elections are coming like this, you see activities. When there are no elections, somebody wears a title or people wear titles. They parade themselves in that in that so-called titular offices, but you don't see any groundwork. But let's put that aside. I'm saying now that if they meet or the, if they even have credible members list, what is difficult about calling your members? Every every database where your name is now has your phone number. 
has your phone number, has your email address. Even INEC, I did my my update. I lost my my PVC about four years ago, June 12, 2018, when I was kidnapped in Delta Delta State. Somewhere in the neighborhood of Wari. And I just thought, you know what? Ah, these people have made it so convenient. See, ah, they, I could do continuous voter registration online. And I went to, you know, INEC.CVR, updated my list. I just to go and pick. Because that's a credible list. When I got there, I saw my name. I saw the address I used. I could update it. Why can't the parties have something like that? All right. So let's um, talk specifics. Well, in spite of the faults in, in the system, I don't know if you are among the optimists, but I've, I've spoken to more optimists who say it's, it's still a work in progress uh, and, and hopefully we get there <clears throat> as a when, nation. When I hear such rationalizations, I, I get very angry. You know why I get very angry? This morning, if you have not done it, you will, you will do it. You probably do it this morning or today. You will pick your phone, go to an app of one of the banks that you use. You will transfer money, or you will go and check whether somebody that you are expecting money for from has transferred the money to you. What else could need more security than that? And yet, we have the technology. We have the extant infrastructure and architecture, either through the banks, either through INEC, either through our driver's licenses, either Nigerian passports that used to be really could have been traveling since I escaped poverty by running away as a, as a young economic immigrant some 30 something years ago. I've been traveling that, that long. And you know what? Nigerian passports used to be, they would ask you if you were using your brother's passport. Now, in the last 10 years, they don't ask you anymore because our passport is biometric. So we have all these databases, respectable databases, and we cannot, we cannot compel the parties to leverage any of those. All right. To that, build credible that members. Is, that see. is also an interesting point because it has also said that let the parties determine how they want to do it. There should be a level of um, observation or a level of um, regulation on the conduct of how parties run their affairs. You are never in doubt, if I give you my BVN details now, if you ask, oh, I want to do business with you, but I want, we will exchange BVN inclusive or to, to establish our identity. I mean, it's all about choice, isn't it? Uh, so, but, so you have a choice if you want to follow the times. We, or, know, right. we know the databases that are credible. Right. We know that, look, Andy Uba claimed... APC claimed to have about 3 million members in Anambra State. And the UBA claimed that he was, he was choosing as the candidate of APC in Anambra with over a million APC members. And the UBA could not Ghana at the real battle finale of the election. He could not Ghana 300,000 votes. Michael Jackson, you, you know Michael Jackson used to vote in Ondo State. Michael Jackson, uh, MC Yama. It was not until we migrated from those manual distinct to technology. And that's why some of us fought vociferously enough that we must keep inputting technology into our electoral system. It was after we introduced PVC that Michael Jackson could not be resurrected anymore to vote in Ondo State. Uh, MC Amma could not be represented to vote in. A, you know, there was a time in Nigeria, even the Supreme Court of Nigeria acknowledged it, that Olusha Gwambasanjo got more votes in his second, you know, in his second attempt at got more votes than the total, you know, boosted than the total of registered voters on the electoral list. On, but they said that was not good enough to vitiate his re-election. That was why they, they accepted the re-election. But Ever since we introduced the PVC, have you ever seen any word in Nigeria where you get 100% people voting, even with the abuses of forging? Hey, look, the, the infrastructure is there. 
but the political class not wanting to be accountable, still wanting to leave rooms, rooms, not room, still wanting to leave rooms for their manipulation of the system. They don't want all this credible credible identification infrastructure to be articulated politically. And that is why I'm still saying that 2022 will be the year of the great electoral forge. It has commenced. 2022 is, you know, really right here with us. Looking at the uh, this and that now between the PDP and the APC, let, let's talk about uh, personalities now and, and what how the race would be. The governorship uh, race here in Lagos looks like it will have a kind of interesting uh, twing now if you look at um, the fallout of the, the PDP and APC primaries. So, so, so the candidate now in the PDP is a former APC man. Oh, yes. Former APC man. But apart from being a former APC man, uh, APC should be very careful in 2023 gubernatorial elections. And the reason why they have to be very careful is, one, uh, Jando was raised politically, nurtured within the APC family. It was the frustration that he felt. I must confess, it's like a younger brother and a friend. Uh, it was the frustration he felt that the APC's election, which was validated yesterday anyway, was not going to be free and fair that made him to jump board. And uh, we know that some elements, but you see why the APC must not just wave him up, and I know they won't wave him up off like that, is that uh, he is touching some very emotional points in Lagos. He's speaking to some very emotional, uh, how genuine he is, I don't know, uh, but I know all politicians are opportunists. And is opportunistically, opportunistically touching some very emotional points. Uh, the Aborigines, they won't quite say, they will say Lagos or Lagos. They are actually exciting the, uh, the Aborigines who are, who are now feeling somewhat, uh, somewhat at Dubai to think, to think, you know what, you could ride this wave with me. Uh, the point is that in every democracy, even in Singapore, where a single party has transformed the country from a poverty reduced society to, you know, an OECD A++ country, uh, every election cycle, the party's votes falls because there is a natural fatigue when one party is constantly the party that seems to prevail electorally in, all, in circles of elections. So APC has that baggage to carry. Apart from that too, APC uh, must realize, uh, look, I often say this, I've said it a couple of times, you. there's a dictum I, I, I learned as a politician in England. Most times in liberal democracies, Opposition parties don't win elections. Ruling parties lose them. Opposition parties right. seldom win elections. Ruling parties lose them because of the right. ar arrogance of incumbency, disconnection with the people, seeming disconnectivity with the concern. So uh, they must be very careful not right. to think this is uh, the. Uh, we'll I see. don't want to mention a candidate who, who stole we'll his own. See. We'll see how, how it all goes. Uh, we thank you very much, uh, Gola Oba, for your analysis uh, of um, you know how things are going thank you for the opportunity as we prepare to for the general election. Thank you.